Hi, I am Smriti Rastogi and today I am here at the Bhabha Atomic Research Center in Mumbai where the quest to make India self-reliant in the field of nuclear energy began. I am sure that you all are curious as I am to understand various applications of the atomic research. Some of you might also be thinking of pursuing a career in this field. We will find answers to all your questions as we explore various facilities at Bhabha Atomic Research Center. population of the world, the demand of energy is also increasing. Governments and experts across the globe are trying to find cleaner and safer sources of energy. It is in this context that the atomic energy has come up as a potential method for energy production. You would be surprised to know that even a small football size sphere of atomic fuel can produce thousands of megawatts of energy that can light up the entire metro city. Think of atomic energy and nuclear programs and the first thing that comes to mind is weapons and warfare. But there is much more to it than that. Nuclear engineering is fast emerging as a powerful technology with applications in many areas, the most crucial of them being the energy sector. Rising energy demand is among the most talked of issue of the day, especially in developing country like India and nuclear energy presents itself as the most viable alternative in the face of diminishing resources of fossil fuels like coal and petroleum as a clean, long-lasting option for energy production. Large thorium deposits in India holds of massive potential for peaceful and purposeful utilization of atomic energy here. In BARC, Dr. Homi Jahangir Baba laid the foundation of atomic energy research in the country. Today, India is among just about half a dozen countries and the only developing nation to have robust nuclear program for power production. The Baba Atomic Research Center in Mumbai was established in 1954. It is a premier multidisciplinary nuclear research center of India that conducts research and development in various fields of atomic energy, nuclear science and engineering. Its prime focus is to make India self-sufficient in the field of atomic energy. R&D activities based on various aspects of nuclear energy are also conducted here. The Baba Atomic Research Center in Mumbai, popularly known as BARC, is the hub of nation's nuclear engineering research. This autonomous institution of the Department of Atomic Energy is a premier multidisciplinary research institute. It boasts state-of-the-art infrastructure for advanced R&D in nuclear science and related areas. It was established with the aim of developing indigenous know-how of nuclear technology and making the country self-sufficient in nuclear power production. 130 scientists and technicians had launched this institution. Today, nearly 10,000 scientists and support staff carry out a vast range of activity related to nuclear technology electricity production from nuclear fuel to radiation medicine for cancer, applications for improved crop varieties to food preservation and a range of industrial applications. Not many people are aware of the use of atomic energy other than its application in warfare and production of electricity. Atomic energy has a huge potential as nuclear medicines. Its radiations are used for the treatment of cancer, for developing improved crop varieties, food preservation, treatment of bio-organic waste and other industrial applications. Weapons and the application of nuclear technology. Over the decades, much has been said and written on the subject. Another has been nuclear technology and energy, 
the huge positives, cost and non-polluting benefits. But there is much more that's still unknown. A key application, for example, is medicine, diagnosis and treatment of cancer, thyroid problems and even certain heart conditions come under a specialized branch called nuclear or radiation medicine. This branch makes use of special isotopes to diagnose the illness and gamma rays to destroy cancerous growth. Agriculture is another big focus area for nuclear technology. Radioisotopes are tagged to fertilizers to monitor plant intake and manage fertilizer usage. Ionizing radiations are also used to create new variety of crops. The sterile insect technique used to control pests is another interesting application of nuclear science. Insect eggs are exposed to gamma radiations and thus sterilized even before they hatch. Pest breeding and population are controlled. Then there is radiation being used for food packaging and preservation. In industry too, nuclear science and engineering is used to detect and analyze pollutants in the manufacture of machines and materials, in navigation beacons, checking wheels of new gas and oil pipeline systems. This training school was established in 1957 by Dr. Homi Baba with the aim of generating skilled manpower in the field of atomic and nuclear energy. Renowned scientists like Dr. Anilka Kodkar, Dr. V. S. Ramamurthy and Dr. R. K. Sinha come from this prestigious institution. BARC Training School is among India's most sought-after educational institutions. Besides the main center in Mumbai, the institution has branches in Indore in Madhya Pradesh, Kalapakkam in Chennai and Hyderabad in Andhra Pradesh. The training school conducts an array of training programs under the guidance of Department of Atomic Energy. The most renowned of these is its flagship OCES program. Under the one-year program, the school conducts a one-year orientation course for selected engineering graduates and science postgraduates. Applications for the various courses are invited every December. Eligibility extends to science postgraduates and BTEC degree holders via Gates course and a written entrance exam followed by interviews. One lakh applications come in each year. Just 4,000 of them are shortlisted for the interview stage and 300 are finally selected to undergo rigorous training. Graduates of the institute are placed in various sections of the Department of Atomic Energy. The batch of 2014-15 to 15 will be the 58th at the BARC Training School. Trainees with engineering qualification are also eligible to join the MTech program at the Homi Baba National Institute. There is also the DAE Graduate Fellowship Scheme in collaboration with the Indian Institute of Technology. Under this, special selection in OCES, if a candidate gets admission to MTech in an IIT, he or she works on the MTech project of DAE interest. He is supervised jointly by guides from the IIT and DAE. There are also short-term project work and training programs at the institution. They are open to students in the third or fourth year of the undergraduate engineering program and science students in postgraduate programs. The training school also provides nuclear and radiation oriented courses for students. These include Diploma in Radiological Physics, Diploma in Radiation Medicine and Diploma in Medical Radioisotope Techniques etc. So this is the office of Dr. B.K. Datta, Head of HRD Division and Dean of Homi Baba National Institute. I'll go and speak to him about the BARC Training School and various academic programs available here. Excuse me, sir. May I come in? Please come. Hello, sir. Hello. I'm Smriti from Rajya Sabha TV. Nice to you? meet you. I'm Thank fine. You, How are you? Sir, I'm also good. Sir, uh, we have heard a lot about BARC Training Center. So, it is important that since this is our career show, we get to know in depth various features of this institution and of course other factors, other aspects also. Mr. Datta, if you could tell us about the vision of Dr. Homi Baba behind setting up this training institution. Yeah, see Dr. Bhava 
established what you call that time it was called atomic energy establishment on 20th january 1957 in trombe now he could realize the importance of nuclear science and engineering in indian scenario yeah. not only in the area of nuclear power also societal benefits but the main problem he faced was the availability of human resources in the area of nuclear science and technology the, there was no no um, university that time offering yeah. the curriculum in the area of nuclear science and technology so what he decided was that we must develop our own human resources within the country yeah. and then dr datta how is the curriculum of the training school decided now uh, there are committees here which are called the training school committees yeah. they consist of very senior scientists here they decide the curriculum yeah. now whole one year program training school yeah. program is actually divided into three modules yeah. the first module we call it a foundation module and uh, all nuclear oriented subjects are mm -hmm. taught in this foundation module like reactor physics reactor training mm -hmm. power plant engineering and all that and this is common to all the disciplines mm -hmm. this is typically 3 to 4 months mm -hmm. then the second module starts which we call it the core module cool. now there the courses are discipline specific that is mechanical engineers will learn separate physics people will learn separate mm -hmm. and all that. there are again some four to five subjects are there and i must mention here that uh, these uh, subjects yeah. are equivalent to any mtech course subject in iits they are of that standard mm -hmm. now at the end of second module uh, then the third module starts and third module consists of two things mm -hmm. morning time they go through what you call the elective subjects that is we offer them eight to nine subjects mm -hmm. and the trainees they have to choose the subjects of their likings and how many subjects two to three only they have to choose typically we offer them nine subject to nine subject mm -hmm. to and afternoon there is a mini project that means they have to go inside brc mm -hmm. and under the guidance of a very senior scientist mm -hmm. they have to carry out a project okay. and these projects are the real life problem from the nuclear industry mm -hmm. so they get a first hand experience of how to handle the projects now at the end of the all the three modules based on their performance various exams which are conducted we prepare a merit list mm -hmm. and the top fellow is given the what you call the homi bhaba medal and what exactly is the placement process first we collect mm -hmm. the vacancies from the various da units mm -hmm. as well as within the units divisions mm -hmm. so the all the vacancies are compiled and there is a very high level committee they are called tc committee in brc this list is discussed the based on the actual programs going on in the in the department so this list is further uh, further uh, corrected and actual vacancies available are displaced to that displayed to the trainees and uh, then at the based on their merit list based the rank in the merit list they choose the uh, choice of their units and the division uh one more question uh which i wanted to ask you uh which batch training school you belong to and how was your experience here at the training school it was a fantastic experience i uh, i joined the department 20th batch of the training school now you can imagine the 58th batch so i joined the department 38 years back and those days beside the uh, beside the senior scientist mm -hmm. iit professors are also coming us to teach in training schools very very specialized subjects mm -hmm. those are exciting uh, days for us in the training school dr datta we appreciate your presence on our program and the details which you have given us i'm sure that they will help the students who are uh, inspired to join this program and study here thank, thank you so much. much thank you so much among the most important research sections at barc is the radiation medicine center founded in 1963 This is today the largest nuclear diagnostic center in all of the Southeast Asia. It provides low-cost nuclear medicine and diagnostic facilities to nearly 10,000 patients every year. The RMC is also involved in clinical R&D, development of novel imaging protocols, radio pharmaceuticals and diagnostics. The dedicated labs with their state-of-the-art infrastructure carry out R&D activities and training that includes advanced reactor technologies and nuclear power 
material sciences, computers and electronics, environment and radiation monitoring, chemical engineering, food health and agriculture and more. There is another umbrella organization in this building called Homi Baba National Institute. For those who want to pursue higher education like MPhil, integrated PhD and PhD in the areas like chemical, biological, physical, mathematical and engineering sciences, Homi Baba National Institute is the place. The Homi Baba National Institute was established in 2005 by the Department of Atomic Energy. HPNI is an institute of excellence. The institute is a deemed university providing doctoral and master's courses in different scientific disciplines. Highly specialized courses in health sciences are a big attraction. They include a diploma in radiological physics, diploma in radiation medicine, diploma in medical radioisotopes techniques, MD pathology, anesthesia, radiotherapy and others. The HPNI has 10 constituent institutes, 4 are research centers of DAE and 6 are DAE grant and aid institutes. Employees of BARC and DAE who want to improve academic qualification while in service can pursue higher education at HPNI. So right now I am with Dr. R. B. Grover, Director of Homi Baba National Institute. Sir, we are delighted to have you on our program. Welcome to the Institute. Thank you so much, sir. Um, my very first question to you, what was the rationale behind setting up this institute? Uh, in the Department of Atomic Energy, we have several uh, research and development institutions. And all these institutions have been running human resource development programs right from the inception. We have Baba Atomic Research Center, we have Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, uh, Raja Ramana Center for Advanced Technology in Indore, Variable Energy Cyclotron Center in uh, Kolkata. Then we have several grant in aid institutions and they are also running very good human resource development programs. The idea was that uh, in order to run these programs more efficiently, expand them, why not bring them under a single uh, umbrella. Uh, Dr. Grover, if you can brief us on the various academic courses which are offered here. Uh, academic courses which we have is uh, M.Tech in uh, various uh, disciplines of interest to the atomic energy program in India. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have PhD in uh, engineering sciences, physical sciences, mm -hmm. chemical sciences, mathematical sciences, strategic studies, life sciences, health sciences. Uh, then we have uh, uh, medical programs which are essentially run at Tata Memorial Center. They are medical courses at the postgraduate level. Mm -hmm. MD programs, uh, all related to oncology, mm -hmm. and then super specialty programs which are after this mm -hmm. postgraduate program. Dr. Grover, it was pleasure having you on our program, and I'm sure that the information which you have given to us will be very useful for the students who want to get enrolled here. Thank you for coming here, and I'm sure students will benefit from joining an institute like HPNI to pursue doctoral research. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Students selected for the BARC training school through OCES interview are often recruited within the Department of Energy. On successful completion of the one-year rigorous training at BARC training school, graduates are absorbed in various sections of the Department of Atomic Energy. There are different levels of entry and students are placed either as scientists or as technical officers. In addition, PhD students can join the department through Krishnan Scholarship Scheme. This is a two-year postdoctoral fellowship. After one year, a committee evaluates students and may offer employment based on performance. For science and engineering diploma graduates and others, the DAE offers a CAT-1 training program which inducts candidates at the level of scientific assistance. Besides these, candidates with SSC or HSC qualification with an ITI diploma can also join the department as CAD2 trainees. 
they are recruited as technicians. A career in nuclear science requires a strong science background with physics, chemistry, computer science and mathematics at 10 plus 2 level. After graduation, one can pursue post-graduation in nuclear science, nuclear engineering, chemistry and physics with emphasis on nuclear analysis, engineering, mathematics or physical science. Institutes like Indian Institute of Technology, SRM University in Tamil Nadu, Amity Institute of Nuclear Science and Technology, University of Petroleum and Energy Studies in Dehradun, etc. provide advanced courses in nuclear science and technology. Excuse me sir, may I come in? Yeah. May I join your class? Yeah, please. So they are bulging out. They are moving in the same Point where these collisions are taking place. Uh, sir, I am Smriti Rastogi from Rajya Sabha TV. We have come here to explore various career opportunities in the field of atomic energy. So, I have one um, question for you. Okay. Like, uh, since this atomic energy is a very rigorous course and a creamy layer of students, they come here to pursue their career. Yes. So, how do you channelize their talent? Uh, well, basically, we are having a one-year orientation course here. You can see all these students, they are basically from science and engineering. And uh, <coughs> well, there is no, not a segregation as a science and engineering because it's all one. And for example, I am teaching the accelerator physics course, part of the accelerator physics course. And these students undergo a one year rigorous course on various subjects, mm -hmm. subjects which they have learned in an advanced stage or new subjects. Mm -hmm. For example, accelerator physics course, the, this subject is not taught for engineers, even for physics. Mm -hmm. So that is taught, and because this is a mandatory thing. I have few questions for my friends as well. If you give permission, can I go ahead? <laughs> okay. So, hi everyone. Hi. Uh, let me begin by asking you, what's your name? Uh, I'm Shailesh Sharma. And what course are you studying? This is our accelerator physics course and I'm in an OCDF course. There is a four month orientation course for us. And just to have an idea of the nuclear nuclear reactor and what goes inside nuclear reactor and the radiations that come out coming out of it. We are given a uh, rigorous orientation course. So although it is not related to what I'll be researching in, but it is very essential to know because entire arena is around the uh, nuclear reactor. If you would like to answer my question, yeah. what's your name? Uh, my name is Sukhdeep Singh. Uh, Sukhdeep, if you can tell us about your academic background. Yeah, there are a lot many opportunities in this uh, area of nuclear science because uh, the energy needs of the country are exponentially increasing. We have to rely on some sources which we have because India is a thorium rich country and uh, we have a lot of scope to, uh, to, uh, uh, yeah, to do a lot of research in this area. Let me put some question to a female. Yes, you. What's your name? Hi, my name is Vahdat Safia. Tell us about your course and how was your experience studying your course? Uh, studying this course. Um, I am. Uh, I have done B.Tech from Computer Science, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. After <coughs> passing out from B.Tech, I have the options in uh, uh, um, uh, in MNCs like for going for corporate job, and then. But my core interest resides in getting into the research field where I can explore ahead. This uh, Baba Atomic Research Centers. It's a platform that gives us that uh, helps us to soar high in the research field. Basically, in the Department of Atomic Energy, like uh, using nuclear energy in each and every field. Either it's a medical, either it's a, uh, producing power, either it's environment. Each and everything we can utilize this nuclear energy. And still, uh, much more being is to be explored in this field. Uh, who would else like to share his experience? Let me first ask him. Huh? Yeah. So, what's your name? Uh, hello, I'm Atif Sheikh. I'm from Aurangabad, Maharashtra. And I'm from electronics and communication background. So, Atif, uh, tell us about your experience. Uh, actually, when I applied for BARC, uh, there were two options. First, uh, we can get selected for the interview through gate exam or through online examination. So, when I uh, came to know that I've been selected through online examination to undergo the interview process, uh, I started consulting my seniors and all to know about how, what kind of questions I will get here. And everyone said that the BARC interview for uh, scientific officers is the toughest technical interview in, the, in India. 
at least for the electronics and communication, even it is tougher than IITs and UPSC engineering services, the technical part of it. So um, I focused with the help of my seniors, I focused on my preparation strategy and uh, whatever subjects which I have learned in the engineering, I selected five out of them uh, with whom I'm, I was very comfortable. Then I, w I started reading them from a practical point of view. Uh, so what's your name? Hi, my name is Gurpreet and I'm basically from Muradabad, UP. But I did my B.Tech from Punjab University, Chandigarh. And then I worked for two and a half years in Larson Tubro Construction Limited. So what propelled you to uh, come into this field after spending two and a half years in LNT? Actually, my basic interest was in the research field. And being here, like in BARC, the best institution in India for the research field in nuclear sciences. So it gives me an opportunity to, you know, uh, indulge myself into the research field and include my basic knowledge of civil engineering into the nuclear sciences. Uh, I also want to add something. I want to pick up from where my friend left. Uh, the biggest advantage which I felt after coming here is that you get to meet so many people from every sphere of uh, our country. Um, there are research opportunities, um, security for females, of course, that's a big thing enjoying the life of Mumbai and uh, being uh, in such a renowned institute it's really a big thing for any person. I am also going to talk about some of my background. Actually, I am from the village of Rajasthan. My mom and dad are both a farmer and they do not have a study. I want to give a message to all the villages that they can also come and come. And the most major factor, which I had not been good at my engineering college, so, one thing that is NPTEL videos, which are in IRT lectures. So, if you follow all the students, if you follow NPTEL videos, you can crack the interview easily. There are videos in IRT lectures, which are in the teachers, which are in the video lectures on the internet, and you can download them if you can download them. So, the concept is clear. And one more thing, that we have the name of Baba Parman Unhasandhan, when we have studied in the children, and today we are there. So, this is a good thing for me. Absolutely, 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 So I am sitting here with these young trainees who might be the future nuclear leadership of this country. It is possible that some of the trainees out here might become future Dr. Homi Baba. I had a great learning experience exploring this institute and hope this has answered all your queries as well. And that's all we have for you. We'll see you next week with more such career disciplines to explore. Till then keep watching Rajya Sabha TV. <laughs>